When you're talking about uh, EVAR and TVAR uh, in patients who've got peripheral arterial disease or aortic occlusive disease, uh, the challenge has uh, always remained that uh, the devices that we have tend to be uh, larger French size. And with that puts the patients at risk for iliac artery injuries, uh, ruptures, dissections. And when you have those complications, uh, it really increases the morbidity uh, as well as potentially mortality uh, in those patients in which you're trying to really keep it a minimally invasive procedure. I mean, the purpose of those procedures is to do it, get in, get out, and then let the patients go home. So when you have those challenges, it, uh, the, the procedure becomes longer, more difficult, and if you can either decrease the French size or we can have something that allows us to get those devices up there without injuring the vessels, then it's going to be a marked benefit for the patient. Prior to shockwave, uh, and we had heavily calcified vessels, uh, to get the devices up was, uh, was always a challenge. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've had some um, evolution of the devices, making them a little bit smaller, uh, but it's still a challenge in patients with significant disease. Uh, so over the last 20 years, I would say our first go-to therapy was to do a conduit, which was really a large incision, a pretty large incision, dissection down to the iliac, clamping the iliac, and then sewing that on there, and then passing the device up through that. Um, the problem with that is fair amount of morbidity for the patient. Then as the devices got smaller and then we had other uh, sort of uh, technologies come along, we would then uh, just do standard ballooning. We would attempt to do doddering, um, which is just sort of these archaic ways of dilating up vessels, but we would oftentimes have a lot of recoil. Then we would attempt to put covered stents in, um, which is expensive. It typically requires a lot of stents. And oftentimes, even when you dilate them up, you still can't dilate them up to get the device to go through. So you do all that work, and then you're back to sewing on a conduit and or switching to the other side. Uh, lastly, when the, when the vessel was very small, we would sometimes then take atherectomy devices. Now, the atherectomy devices are really, for the most part, made to be used in smaller vessels, the SFA. So we could maybe get a hole that was 3.5, maybe 4 millimeters in diameter, and then take the balloon and then dilate it up. The problem with that is, one, it's long. Uh, it, it requires multiple passes. Then you have the risk of embolization, uh, and then the expense. So that then gets you into utilizing the atherectomy devices, balloons, plus or minus stents, putting in a device. Now that we have shockwave, uh, that has really sort of changed the dynamics of what we're doing. Uh, we can actually go in there, avoid all those things that really, some work very well. I mean, a conduit works very well, but it's bad for the patient. The other ones sort of can get you the job done, but aren't always 100% successful. Now with this uh, device that's really specifically made to basically break up calcium and really breaks it up in the wall. We've had fantastic results, but really keeping the procedure as minimally invasive as if you had normal anatomy. So it's been really a game changer in, in our practice, which is in North Carolina, which has a lot of aneurysmal disease, but coupled with that, pretty severe peripheral arterial disease.